uh, exploring on my farm, you know, how can I become energy self-sufficient? And 2001, I started to use my irrigation motor as plant nutrients. And then in 2005, I started with a, a diesel engine on a tractor, putting the emissions into the soil that are conditioned and cooled and, and uh, practice that to see what happens. So what is it that you're adding to the soil that's beneficial? Well, the diesel fuel is uh, an energy source that powers the tractor. And it's, uh, as you look into the, what's in diesel fuel, is it's packed full of uh, minerals uh, that, are, that are really plant nutrients. And so when you oxidize it, it becomes plant and soil and microbial available. And that's what's stimulatory to it. And there's many other chemistry properties that we've studied at universities. It's actually a seed treatment. It controls soil-borne pathogens. There's minor emissions that do this kind of work that, that are beneficial. Is there anything within the um, emissions that you're placing in the soil that's having any negative impact on it? So far, we haven't come across any uh, part of the emissions that would be negative towards plant growth. It actually causes seeds to sprout sooner. It causes plants to really express their genetics potential more. And so the plant is the bioindicator. The plant's doing well. There isn't anything that's really inhibiting. And that's what we've found so far. It's all stimulatory. Does the impact depend on the sort of soil you're using this in? Because there are soils that are deficient in minerals, in trace minerals, and others that aren't. All soils of the crust of the earth are fairly similar. The, the only thing that's last, lacking in soil uh, is really carbon. So, you know, you take dirt and you add carbon to it, then you get soil. So uh, as far as pH of soils, you know, there might be 5 pH, there might be 8 pH. We work in soils that are up to 9 pH, and we work in soils that are 4 CO2 is what brings the pH towards 7, the same as in, in my blood. My brain is sensing how high the CO2 is, and I respirate in order to control pH. So that's what our soils must do is start to respirate. But in agriculture, the biggest problem is compaction. No respiration, pH goes out of whack. So if we can get more microbial life in our soil, we'll get more respiration, and then pHs will come towards natural near 7. So you would say that your system improves the microbial life in the soil? That's where I first started off. That was my interest, is to feed the microbial life and help the plant feed the microbial life. And so that's why I call it bioactive. It's really working with the biological system in agriculture and getting more activity in our soil. And that's my main focus, yes. Now, for, for me, as, a, you know, as a, an onlooker, I know that if I'm standing next to a diesel engine, I don't want to be standing next to it too long. It has a negative impact on my health. But you're, you would say that the impact on the soil is not the same, that it's a very different setup. Yeah, as far as, uh, as you, yourself, standing by a diesel engine, we're both respirating. Okay, so we're, we're um, both using a, an energy source to get our energy to move. Where a plant is using my breath or the exhaust from the engine, that's what plants do, and that's what microbial life in our soils do. So as far as um, thinking about this, everyone thinks that exhaust is toxic. It could be toxic to us in certain levels if you have too much, but to a plant, to microorganisms, to the soil structure, to the chemistry in the soil, it's all similar to really good aerobic respirating soil. The emissions are the same. So, so that's what it, we have to get into our, into our thinking and to teach farmers, you know, really how does this work? We have to understand uh, there's many, many things that benefit by emissions. Is this, in fact, a little bit like acknowledging the fact that there really is no such thing as a true waste product, that everything is actually useful provided it's applied in the right way? Yeah, pollution is something in its wrong place. And so that's absolutely true, is that, is that if you have a piece of machinery that can direct its result back into a, a useful place, and that's so amazing with this tractor, is that it's going over the soil where it's needed right then, because... When you're ripping with a time, that's been the criticism, is that uh, we should go more zero till. But if we put the respiration back in, it actually feeds the life in the soil so it can repair the soil. So it's, it's one and one, yeah. So you can see that there would be an application when you're ripping with a tine or when you're air seeding. But what about when you're just doing stuff in the tractor? You know, does it have to be, does the byproduct have to be used at the time or can it be stored? Well, we don't really ever want to store it because that costs money and that causes more pollution possibility. So I have the technology developed where it's with an irrigation motor, when it's sitting in one place, running on diesel fuel, the emissions are used into the water. Then I developed it for the tractor, so we place it into the dirt, the dirt is the absorbent to it. And then also I have it for grooming 
golf courses or, or your lawn at home or pastures, and we can put it on sprayers, we can put it on headers. Anytime an engine runs in agriculture, the emissions can be directed to, the, to a, an absorbent, and that's really the earth of the plant. What's the uptake of this in Australia? Well, in Australia, the farmers don't have crop insurance, and so their risk level is a lot higher than in America. And so I did have a lot of uh, interest in America when our grain prices were very low and there was a lot of droughts. But in Australia, your um, risks have not diminished. And so the, the uptake is a lot more steady here than what it's been in America. But the price, the price of grain has gone in half now and the phone's starting to ring again because change is driven by economics. And that's really what drives it. Necessity is the mother of invention. Well, it is. And that's why I started to do this 10 years ago. Farmers are the inventors of the industry, and so we're out in the dirt and out with the plants and trying to figure out how this works, and that's how every piece of machinery has been developed is by farmers of necessity. Yeah, I'm an active farmer. Uh, our family's been in agriculture for 100 years, and so I still farm to, to experiment because if I don't practice what I preach, um, how could I actually personally understand my machine? And so I, I am uh, developing it. Uh, our farm family, our sons of our journeyman welders, and and uh, we support other farms around the world. It's a really a farm gate technology at this time, so you have to do that because that's how you know John Deere started. That's how any of these machine companies they began on the farm and they grew from there. And so that's really what I have to do is to practice it on my farm to experiment, and then I take those experiments around the world, and we have other farmers prove my claims.